streaming in with us. Uh, Say Biff 2023, we are all about HBCU film love. Um, the film that you just saw, Nappy by Lydia Douglas. Uh, Lydia is actually an HBCU grad. She went attended Howard University. And amazingly enough, this film is 25 years old. And so we want to get into a conversation uh, where I'm going to bring in Lydia as well as Devet. And I'll introduce them when they come in and basically talk about just the, the progress or lack thereof of natural hair, the issues around it, the politics, and a whole bunch of other stuff that we'd like to bring to the fold. Ladies, welcome. We have the top, we have Lydia A. Douglas, the filmmaker. And the bottom there, we have Devet. Uh, Mar Marby. Maybry. <laughs> like, I'm totally messing that up just in the intro. Sorry, ladies. It's okay. So we want to um we want to basically just have a, a really productive conversation on um just hair in general. And I want to start with you, Lydia, because you know, as a filmmaker myself, one of my first films, and it seems like it's like a a thing with black women doing their first film projects to do either films on hair or identity or something that's relating to how how it impacts us as women. And so what 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 inspired you to to want to do um, a film on uh, hair and name it nappy? OK, well, uh, let's see what inspired me was initially I was a um, still a photographer. And I had done a slideshow, remember slideshows, where you put uh, two slides together and I was juxtaposing um, images of black women and girls that I had taken with photographs and images that I had seen um, in the media. And I did not like what I was seeing in the media. It wasn't realistic. So initially I was going to somehow try to translate that project into a film. But um, my, my thesis advisor advised against it. And he said, it would be too long. So I said, take a part of it that you think is very important. And um, the part of it that spoke to me was hair. Because I believe that regardless of how you wear your hair, if you're a black woman in America or any other colonized place, you could relate to um, the discrimination about hair. So. That's why I decided to make a phone ball here. And I wanted to call it nappy. I wanted something simple. Um, I wanted something that people could remember and identify with. And even though, unfortunately, it is a derogatory term, I had hoped to um, yeah, be able to associate natural hair, being happy with your natural hair, with the term nappy. I don't really see nappy as negative. Or I'm sorry. I mean, people do, but I don't see it as negative because I associate it with natural. So I I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Devet, why did you see that as negative? I'm I'm laughing because there is a generation of African American, especially the older men, that did not like seeing the edges of, of little girls having nappy hair. Your pond is your glory, but it needs to be straight because that's something that how it's supposed to be. And it's not. Mm -hmm. it, it is not. And nowadays, our new generation, uh, girls are 25 years old and older talking about baby hair. Like, we don't have 40-year-old baby hair. And when it comes all the way down to here and it makes the little design, to me, it's just art. But stop calling that stuff baby hair. And then they look at me with my little nappy edges, and I got my song. I love my nappy edges because I do. Yeah, it is yeah. what it is. I mean, this is what this is how God made me. Yeah. You know, when I tried to put perms on my hair, which is one of the reasons why I just start to do nothing but braids. By the time I do that touch up, it goes away. Mm -hmm. It just it breaks down. I don't care how much conditioner, shampoo. <laughs> And I started off as a braider. I went to college school because I wanted to know why black women hair won't grow. Mm -hmm. We wanted to spend that 45 for that perm, but we ain't gonna spend that 45 for that conditioner shampoo. So we lose it. <laughs> for real though. 
But no, I want to, I want to, for me, we all have our hair journeys. And Lydia, yeah. for you yeah. making film, what was your hair journey as it, as it pertains to nappiness? That's such a great question. And I'm thinking about you, when you asked me, why did I make the film nappy and about hair? Because when I was growing up, that's all I heard. Comb your nappy hair. This, that, that, your nappy hair. Why you know let those kids go out there with that nappy hair? Yeah, kids yeah. start with themselves. Oh my it's, God, it's, it's just it's, crazy. It's really crazy. My daughter is studying African American women and African American women in hip hop. And one of the things that she recognized is that the influences that we have put on ourselves from generations before us by saying certain things to us, by the hair, bad hair. Belittering us and not realizing what you're doing. You making me not like what God gave me. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's 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 amazing. We so, how, how, so how was that coming up? So obviously your mom didn't press and curl. My mom press and curl, but, but your mom mm -hmm. didn't. Yeah, so, yeah. so I mean, how was that growing up for you? How did that even as a little girl emotionally? Uh, it was it was oh go ahead, David. No, 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 no. It was, I didn't, I didn't really have, I grew up in LA. I grew up in LA with looking at Angela Davis on television. You know, the sisters in LA was rocking they froze. They was rocking the two pom-poms. They was like doing the cornrow braids. These braids that they're wearing now is the braids that I started out doing back in the late seventies. It's, it's nothing new, ladies. It's nothing new. It's just what's old is new again. Let us know we've been here long enough to see it come back again and again. But yeah, it never really affected me on a prejudiced way, to be honest, until I moved here to San Antonio. And that's when I start seeing the mentalness of people telling me that, oh no, we don't do that here. We don't, we don't know. So it's a, so it's a, G, a lot of, a lot of, um, I, I would say trauma. I would say hair trauma. Yeah. Definitely. Depends on your geographical. Well, well, I would say family. It starts family internal, mm -hmm. but it also mm -hmm. will depend on your, your environment that you're in. And what you have to work with. Huh. Yeah. Now we got a whole new generation. By the time the 80s really hit, a lot of the brothers and sisters was getting job training. They was allowed to get job training especially when Carter was in office, he was offering job training. You start getting that job training, you start making your money. Now you're working for the Ford company. Now you're working for whoever, whoever, and you moving out of the hood and you're able to take your children and send them to the salon because you no longer had time to do it. And when that happened, we stopped teaching each other, our children, how to maintain and take care of their hair. I got a generation of young women never shampooed their hair before. And for me, I have to fix my face and be like, what? But then I realized, oh, okay, you came from a middle-class family and you didn't have to learn how to shampoo your hair. Right. But you come around me, you won't know how to shampoo your hair mm -hmm. and condition it down. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I did, the, the discrimination amongst ourselves comes 400 years ago by saying that we had to assimilate ourselves to make others comfortable. Mm -hmm. Well, let's, let's, let's talk about that because that, that was the big discussion in the film. The whole, the whole thing about assimilation and what, yeah. what are some things that, that personally impacted you regarding that? Um, and also what you learned from the film, from women in, in the film. Mm -hmm. And I want to I want to emphasize this film is 25 years old. Ain't much changed. Exactly. Exactly. In fact, in some ways, I think we've gone backwards. Um, so ask the question again, or what do we give me the No, topic? I'm just, I'm talking about the impact of, 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 um, of, of being natural, of, of maintaining natural, um, what you learned in the film from your, from your subjects and also mm -hmm. how you were impacted, um, on how you chose to wear your hair coming up. What was the, what was the impact? Well, let's see. From from when I was young, I remember there being this association of natural hair with with being casual. So, like 
you know, if you were going to church, you had to straighten your hair. Um, the association was also definitely we wanted to assimilate. I remember when I was a uh, third grade, so maybe I was like eight or nine. And my mom used to, I didn't, I got mostly press and curl because my hair is very fine and very and kind of weak. So, it, you know, the perms would take, but it would break my hair off. So I mostly did press and curl. And I remember when I was younger, um, this little boy, this little white boy said, how come your hair is kind of like straight, you know, and, uh, you know, Cynthia's hair is in box braids or in braids. He didn't have the words for that, but it was because, I grew up, I grew up in Connecticut, in a small little white town in Connecticut, predominantly white, went to a predominantly white school. Um, my father was a teacher in an affluent uh, school district around mostly white people. So there was more, I think there was more um, consciousness about assimilating in my family. Okay. Yeah. Assimilation as it, as, it, as it pertains to hair. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, I just want to get just, um, I want to talk about the, the, the and then I'm going to switch over to, to just general hair in general. I want to kind of talk some film questions first. But how did you go about getting the folks involved in the film to give their testimonials? And how, did people audition? Did you put an open call to yeah, folks? Well, uh, this was, this was uh, 25 years ago. So I did an open call in a newspaper, a city paper in Washington, DC. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so my call was for women who had made a commitment to wearing their hair natural. Not somebody who was gonna be like natural today and then two weeks gonna wear a weave and then another three weeks gonna cut it. And, and, and so it was like women who had made a commitment to you know, always wearing it natural, their own hair, which a little aside, I always have to, um, I always have to define what natural hair is when I have discussions because women think straightening their hair is natural. It's not because that's not how it grows out of your head. Yeah. So, anywho, that's um, yeah. So that's what I did. And then there were women since it was I was on campus. There were a lot of women that wanted to work on the film and wanted to do research and help me out finding music and just all sorts of stuff. Um, so that's how I got the women. Uh, two or three of the women were referred to me. Mm -hmm. One of the women, the white woman that adopted the little black girl, she was my neighbor. I thought that that would be very interesting mm -hmm. because she she said she didn't want to straighten her daughter's hair. And um, in fact, she used to hire me to braid her hair. <laughs> so, you, so you did learn how to braid too. Coming I up. did. <laughs> but I, no, I knew how to braid, but um, I got more practice. I got practice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So you had made a statement earlier. You said that you think that things have gotten worse with natural hair. Because I mean, is that because I don't know if it's just me? And I'm the kind of person where I'm like, you wear your hair anyway, however you feel comfortable. I don't, I don't discriminate because you have your hair and whatever, whatever. I'm not one of those people. But I will say that within the last. I don't know if it's 20 years, maybe less. Weaves have just skyrocketed. Yeah. I mean, over natural hair, over braids, over fro. I mean, just like a, a gazillion percent from what they used to be. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, even even in, in, in Africa, when you when I went to Ghana, when I went to I'm wearing my hair in braids, and these little girls are at the beauty shop getting their hair with weeds as hot as it was. So I, I mean, I don't know the phenomenon or the what I mean, what is going on? It's just the influence of media, music video. I mean, what? Yeah, I don't think we can downplay and underestimate the influence of the media, especially now that we have social media, where there's so many different ways that the colonizer can bombard us with these images. Because we've got the regular media TV, we've got streaming, we've got commercials, we've yeah. got Instagram. We, Instagram is like one of the biggest, the most notorious for um, making women and girls feel bad about themselves. Um, TikTok, like everything. We're just bombarded with it. It's crazy. And it has always been a million dollar business. 
it has always we had more steak in it at one time now now it's like the koreans and the you well, know we're all selling the weeds of taking over well they have always the hair really as quick rock i suppose is coming in from india what we consider the good hair and we have always been the ones who did the labor because it was us who taught each other but when it comes to really going into a beauty supply business and getting in with them then they're blocking they're blocking so what it's going to take to be honest it's like five or six african-american putting their serious money down on the line fifty thousand, and just buying a crate of hair like when you see the train coming in then you buy no really you buy that hair and then all the beauty stores put their percentage in and they get the hair and that's how they divide it out mm -hmm. but one individual person like the sister here in san antonio wall to wall beauty you know she's over there and her store is stocked really really well it's hard breaking into that business and then you got to turn around and try to make your money back you know, and then we're saying, man, you're charging two dollars for these rubber bands. Well, the Chinaman charging me 99 cents. I'm gonna go over there and deal with him. Hmm. Wow, but I don't. I go over to the sister. <laughs> hey, there you go with the combs on the wall. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. No, I want to, I want to do that. I want to really talk about because you are you're a hair activist as well as a braider. I mean, you mentioned that you, you. I come from a family of women where everybody had girls, which is amazing. Yeah. Everybody learned how to braid and, and, and then, and then you just, I want to just, what is your journey into natural hair? Um, to be honest, I was just one of those kids who liked working with their hands. I started off learning how to crochet from a Mexican American woman that lived next door to me. I live in the neighborhood with everybody. I lived in LA. And then my mom's friend came over and she braided my older sister's hair. And I just sat there and I washed her hands. I washed that lady's hands like for four hours. Wow. And it took me a year or so before I can get a hold of some hair. And my mama was a hotel operator and she would bring, you know how people leave stuff behind. Well, somebody left a big box of wigs and they had a share wig. Oh, and wow. I took my time and I cut all that hair off that long wig braided my brother's hair got halfway and we didn't have money to go get more hair hair was like 99 cents at the time and she took it down but i got a chance to do it and then i just i just picked it up and when i picked it up it wasn't like i was even thinking about the money i just loved doing it and then i was babysitting this woman's and i did her baby's hair and her baby's baby doll's hair and she says well next time i go get my hair braided i'm gonna tell linda about you Linda was the first African-American woman in Los Angeles on Crenshaw that opened up all braiding shop called The Braidery. Huh. At that time, the state of Texas Cosmetology Board got on her and we went to court in the state, not, I'm sorry, not Texas, California, and the state of California released braiders from cosmetology back in the early 80s. So I just was around those women and I was 14 years old because I lied. I told her I was 16 because you weren't supposed to work. But I was a good kid. Nobody never asked me for no paperwork. Mm. I lied through my teeth to my counselors. No one ever asked me for paperwork. They were like, okay, you go, buddy. Wow. <laughs> good girl. She's respectful. She's got so pretty professional. But what I learned was the business end. I learned that people who have money, they don't want a discount. They just want you to do their hair correctly. You're not doing them a favor by giving them a discount. Mm -hmm. You know, they just want a professional job done. And this is what I'm trying to train with generational mentorship to the sisters and brothers that are coming up, to the brown and black babies. I'm, I'm just letting them know this is a true profession. Yeah. Where else you can go and make from 40 to 50,000 plus with a high school education. I got a GED education because they kicked me out of high school. Not because I was a bad kid, 
But because I didn't fit in, because I had money to hang out at the garment district every Sunday. So I was going to school, I'll dress in everybody like, who is she? The <laughs> teacher thought I was a teacher. The teacher's like, she's not in the lounge. How does she fit in here? And they sent me to the school psychiatrist about for a month. And he just says, it's like you're here, you at the prom, you're in the middle of the floor, but you're not dancing. And I told that man, I never forget it. I'm just trying to save me enough of money to get my own apartment because I'm tired of my brother making me wash the dishes. <laughs> that was the vision. That was the vision. Love it. One, of the things that, one of the things that for me is very key is that hair, braiding, locking, this the whole naturalness of everything, that is an art. And so yeah. you're talking and and I, and I don't think it's classified as an art but you can you give us the distinction between um cosmetology school versus braiding braiders uh i would love to cosmetology is hair and chemicals is hair and science braiders and lock technicians is hair and art because we're taking braids and we're creating by intertwining and twisting and making beautiful sculptures and it's from hair some of them can be very simple by partnering and taking it straight back and then some of it can be very elegant and intricate where it just looks like you have to realize that a lot of this came from slavery mm -hmm. how so give a break that down girl they would they would cornrow different patterns and styles to give people um, direction on which way to go through the rills and through the mountains and, and the river. They had certain codes. Same thing with the coding. Um, if they know that they was getting ready to get shipped away, they would put seeds, corn seeds, or whatever seeds, pea seeds inside their cornrows so when they get to where they got, they can undo their hair in the back of the shed, back in the woods, they would plant their own gardens. Their master had no idea. See, Master thought he was just giving us scraps, but we would work your land when the day was up. But when the moon came up, because we remember we didn't have no light pollution then, we can see. We were out there gardening and getting our own foods together. You know, we had to hunt for rabbit and squirrel, but then we had to hide the bones because we didn't want Master to know that we had some good meat. <laughs> <laughs> We are a very intelligent, common sense type of people. Mm -hmm. We're not going to get into the ones like yourself that are educated. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So they have been underestimating us for a really long time. That's why they start stripping us down to the bottom of the boats because we were rebelling. And then and I think the discrimination, I mean, the underestimation is there, but to add discrimination on top of it based upon your hair and how you how you wear your, how you choose to wear it um, the, whether it's natural or the discrimination is not just coming from white people it's coming from all people i agree because our hair is not straight it doesn't look like theirs it's in, i don't know why it's so intimidating right that's and a we, question. We, and we don't even know the percentage of interracial babies got we got floating around here. Hair is wilder than African hair. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like that little mean a little boy, he dances and he take off his hat and his hair just goes, yeah. yeah. Hair love. Yeah. He can be smart as a whip. He yeah, can I don't know why it's so discriminating as well. well. He can be a banker. He can be a CEO over any corporation, but because of his hair, people have issues. They don't want to listen to anything he has to say. But it's and not like you said. It's not just white people that have issues. It's not. It's not just the white. It's passing the laws, though. It, <laughs> right. What I think is ironic is that white people are the ones that are doing the discriminating, and at the same time, mimicking our hair in so many ways. Like I saw this girl. At the um at a restaurant today, two corn rows in the night, and her hair was kind of curly. Two corn rows in the back, or maybe they were French braids because that's what they kind of do, uh -huh. and um uh -huh. a real cute little poofy uh -huh. bun in the back. I got one better than that. 
there is this white woman with blonde fro locks. Fro locks are artificial locks. She's sitting, in, she's sitting in the chair and the woman is cutting her locks off and she's handing it to her and she's taking the lunch. Like, you ain't, you ain't grew nothing. You don't understand that feeling. I wore my locks for 11 years. This is my third set. I wore my locks for 11 years and I decided that I wanted to see my bald head. This happened in 17. I went to see my bald head. I stood right here in my studio. I took the scissors and I cut. And this feeling just went all over my body. It was just my, not a tingly nerve type of feeling, but I just got this feeling that came through my body. And then I'm like, ooh, I got to finish now because I started right here on purpose. And I went to the barber shop and I shaved my head bald. I wanted to see my scalp. You know how many people was telling me that I need to see a psychiatrist or a psychologist? Uh, I'm going through something. Um, wow. I, I just don't realize that I'm going through something. And I said, what I'm going through is that I want to see my bald scalp. I look at uh, Steve Harvey every day. <laughs> Family Feud. I look at Steve Harvey so much. I say, that's my boyfriend. And then <laughs> Maybe say I saw your boyfriend at my grandma's house. I'm like, what boyfriend do I have at your grandma's house? you hurry. I just wanted to, he inspired me and I did it. And the next morning I woke up and I felt ashamed because my mama started crying when she saw me. My daughter started cussing when she saw me. My neighbor looking at me like I'm sick. Wow. I'm sick. And you know what I did, ladies? I got up and I said, I am going to be Walmart people this morning. I got myself dressed. I put my lipstick on, AKA my makeup. And I went to Walmart and I had my head up high and I got eye contact with people. And you'd be amazed at how many people could not look me back in my eye. There's nothing with this body that says cancer. There's nothing with this body that says one of my organs are failing. I just wanted to see my scap. But isn't it amazing what you have to do mentally? Nothing ever happened. 18 Black Panther comes out. And what did we see? Hmm. A bunch of bald headed women. Now right. everybody's shaving their head because it's fashionable. Yeah. Exactly. It, 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 I'm, it, I'm, it's just the, I don't know, power of the media it again. But it's amazing what you, what you go through. Your hair really dictates a lot of time how you about feel about yourself, how you others feel about, about you. Wow. You were talking earlier about little little babies that get their hair braided with braids, how that makes them feel so good. And yeah. so your, your hair really has such an impact. Mm -hmm. On your feeling, your emotional feeling, your well being. Um, it's right up there with the clothes that wear on your body. It's mm. beyond the clothes to me because you could be naked and still your hair would dictate still more. I mean, to me, <laughs> people will look at you. Yeah. I even talk about it in my film. People will look at you and, and have a whole how story about you based upon how you come with your hair. Different type of story of who you are. That's why I'm just like moving into a room and I'm just quiet and I just listen. I'm just quiet and I just listen. I just got my hair done. I get my hair done three times a year because I like my nappy hair. I like my nappy edges. When I when I first noticed Toni Morrison, I was like, Toni never get her maintenance. But then I grew to love her nappy hair. And I do it like that on purpose. Yeah. I don't care where I'm at. If I'm in a banquet, a ballroom, an executive room, my edges are nappy. Yeah. And they smell good. <laughs> I know they smell good. You know, Ada, a while ago, you had, you made a comment and then you, you had asked me, you said something about why do I think we're going backwards? So um, I've been teaching high school and looking at the girls with the long, I mean, like, you know, black people, especially black women, when we do something, we do it like extra. Bam. So now we got, so now they got the hair, you know, the extension and whatnot past their knees. And what I notice is that I see, I think I can count like in the last six months, how many black women I've seen with braids that where their hair is not permed. 
where mm -hmm. their hair, their hair is always either bone straight permed or slicked back with the gel. So, you know, and, and uh, my niece had her hair braided, uh, I don't know, it was like a week and it started to itch. And so I said, I mean, I don't really know nothing about braids. So, but I said, well, why can't you just rinse it and just rinse the gel out? Because that seems like what's making it flake. And she said that she couldn't do that. So she took everything, took the braids out, like after a week. And she, she should have a week. And um, what was I going to say? Uh, yeah, she said, I said, so what's going on? She said, Auntie, if I wash it or even just rinse it, the braids, you're going to start to see like the little frayed parts of the braids. I, I, I couldn't imagine that because it was like pulled really tight. So there's this obsession with not seeing the actual curl pattern of our hair. And that's what I'm, I mean when I say um, that I think it's gotten worse. Mm -hmm. We can't even see our hair texture, even with an mm -hmm. African-inspired hairstyle. Mm -hmm. Can't do oh, it. Wow. And, and in terms of like people, women having different styles, it's like, I think it's one thing if you want to, you know, go with the trend, go with the, go with the style, but it's almost like, like I said, we're obsessed. Like we just don't, do not want to see anything. Can't I can't like not wear, yeah, can't not wear our braids. I've been braiding hair for over 43 years and I have never used a gel because in my mind, I'm clogging up your pores. And like you said, the situation where you feel like you can't shampoo it. This is why I'm forming the Natural Hair Society to train women, to train their clients that yes, you can shampoo your hair and it should not fall apart after one washing. A good set of braids should last you a leaf of 90 to 120 days. A good set without the gel, because I know yeah. With my grandbabies, they're putting gel on after they braid. Yeah, they, they, like they want to see the slick, the smoothness. And but if you put the braids in correctly, you won't see the new growth until it grows out. So they're doing this new technique that allows the hair to grow out quicker and the braids doesn't last as long. They call them knotless braids. It's nothing new. We've been doing it for years, but we also found out that if we use another technique, the braids last longer. So if you got a young girl and she wants to brace down to her butt, which we used to do that in the 80s, that is nothing new. We did it in the 80s. Remember Jane Chow, the little Italian girl that had to brace all the way down to her ankle, then everybody started wearing a extremely long brace, so you realize you're pulling out your follicle, which means you're tearing up your hair and your scalp. It's too <laughs> heavy. It's a pretty look, but it's just too heavy, uh -huh. you know what I mean? And then my theory is if you take care of your hair correctly in 15 years, your hair will be that long. But don't nobody want to do all that work for some serious kinky hair. It's mm -hmm. time to so many in this work. So yeah, oh. that's what it is. We've been brainwashed, you know, I agree. We've been brainwashed to think that you're not supposed to see your nappy edges. Mm -hmm. And that's why I sing my song, I love my nappy edges. <laughs> I got them. I got edges. Yeah. You know, I keep slicking, I keep doing this, that you know, all this is damage. Exactly. Huh. And it falls out and it takes years. Sometimes it's, it's no getting it back. Yeah. Sometimes it takes years to get that bug motivated to get it to start producing again. No, I remember when I had locks, they were they grew they grew long quickly, three years they were down here. But yeah. I remember I had when I cut my hair totally off. I cut everything off. Mm -hmm. And I did have I had like little little pockets where hair didn't grow mm -hmm. and now it's grown back it's been years but i don't i don't know i, don't, I think they were they may have been too heavy at a certain point i'm not yeah it's that and it, it's it's a factor of a lot of different things you know what i mean um why our hair doesn't grow which is the only reason why i went to cosmetology school i wanted to learn how to cut and i did not understand the only time that i saw black women hair grow is when i kept it in braids but that theory is we're not disturbing it so we can see the new growth. Uh -huh. you know? But like I said, we slap that perm on there and then we want the honey blonde on there. And then even when you go to the salon, you know, having a cosmetology background in order for your hair to look like something, we have to cut and shape it. Uh -huh. So if we constantly cutting and shaping, no, it's not, we're not going to see the growth. Uh -huh. We're constantly cutting and shaping it. Mm -hmm. And why do we need to see it growing? 
that's the other thing. It's like, I mean, well, if it's healthy, why are we obsessed with it growing? I, including myself. The girl, then your daddy now tell you your hair, your crown and glory, and don't you ever cut it? <laughs> it goes back 400 years ago. It goes back 400 years ago. Hmm. It's something just embedded in us. I was talking to my daughter. I also found out that black slave would downrate their son so they won't get sold off. Huh. You don't want to buy him. He ain't no good. He don't. He don't pick good. He don't pick good. You don't want to buy him because she didn't want to see her baby get shipped away. Huh. So we still doing that, and we're not realizing that's what we're doing. That's why. When I gave birth to my daughter, it was my commitment to raise this young person. And I did everything in my power to make sure that she had every opportunity that she thought she wanted. She's a powerhouse. And she could have been a dumb butt. <laughs> All that energy we put into these little people, we don't know what they're going to be. But I just knew that I was dealing with a Black woman in American society that had to be strong. Yeah. My mama raised me. Yeah. You know, you, you gotta, you gotta do it. You just, you just do it. You don't think about it. Yeah. You know, but now, thank God, you know, we're educated and we're teaching ourselves self love. Love your nappy hair. Yeah, mm -hmm. I want to go into hair activism because, and, and the whole politics behind hair because I want to, I want to, I want you to tell us about the San Antonio um, locks. Um, but also I want to talk about the crown act and what that is and why it came to be. And oh, man. I, I well, no. the one. let's talk about San Antonio locks first. And then I want to move into the crown act because okay. San Antonio locks is society is what I named it. And it's going to be changed from San Antonio to just natural hair society, because I realize now this is bigger than me. This is something that God has put on my heart. Um, it needs to be done. I, I'm going to use the word we. We need to have some professional standards to let Americans know we are a legit profession, mm -hmm. just like any other profession. You know, we have to do some generational mentorship, and that's what I'm trying to teach now: is the generational mentorship. Mm -hmm. We teach each other techniques. You know, the technique comes from us. We have people that are developing stuff every day. Every single day, God is giving something to one of us. You know what I mean? And just prepare them for being professional. Mm -hmm. Pay your taxes. How to operate your money when you make it. Because sometimes we make money and it goes away so fast. You make it, it goes away so fast. You'd be like, you know what I mean? How to be prepared, you know, to prepare for your future. Uh -huh. You become older and you can't stand up there no more. If you get arthritis up there, you don't. Thank God I have never had problems with my hands. Now, my feet, my ankles, my back, that's a different story. Yeah. My hands is, is hand position. You got to have the right finger position where you don't stretch your hands out so bad. So that's what it's all about. It's just that generational mentorship to let each other know for that next generation, for those grandbabies that have been born now, I want their grandbabies to have history, like this film you've done, like this this conversation we're having right now. They can go back and they can search and they can find it right? to let them know. Yeah. So... We have a, a, a big screen with the whole nappy hair thing. In my generation, when we had the big bros, they were perfect. But these babies are waking up not combing their hair. Mm -hmm. I'm like, honey, you got six inches of hair on your head. You got to swish it. You got to moisturize it. You just can't waking up looking like. Yeah. I do hair and I'm an old person. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I can't accept that because it's not. It's not that it, I don't think it's not presentable. It just look like you don't care. Yeah, have some pride. I said, did you brush your teeth, bro? That's what it <laughs> looks like. <laughs> so that's the shift that I'm seeing and I'm noticing. Having seen a girl with the long, long braids, I did that. I got pictures, you know, with girls' braids that long that I have done. 
back in the eighties, and I just laugh because they think it's something new. And, wow. Yeah. yeah. I know. I know. Back in the day when I was in in D.C., Lydia, we were, we were there kind of around the same time. There was a lot of lawsuits that were coming up uh, about hair, the whole discrimination that people were suing and and winning. For, you know, being in corporate America with hair, it's beyond that now. We we we. I, I want to move into talking about the Crown Act, what that is. Tell us. Yeah, that the that, of that that Crown Act is, is. We have to go through some stuff in order for stuff to be the norm. Huh. And I don't want to yell, you know, pass the crown act so, you know, people can get sued. That That's not my intention. But these young people looking at, oh, well, if you say something about my hair, I'm going to sue you. No, it's not even about that. And I need this law to pass across the United States. When I was coming up, there was some words we did not call gay people. There were certain words that, you know, you weren't supposed to call the police. But now this new generation don't know those nerve words because we made it the norm not to do that. Mm-hmm. And that's all I'm saying. Just make it the norm. Just make it the norm. It's no way that a sister gets hired from a, a, as a, a CEO at a corporate corporation and she shows up to work in her hair and locks and they tell her, we're so sorry to tell you, but you cannot wear your hair like that. Mm-hmm. You hired me. You paid me to relocate down here. I'm showing up for work and you telling me no. Mm-hmm. That's that's not right. It's just hair, people. It's just hair. Right. You know? well, what was the history behind that? You were saying something about Dallas. The sister started braiding school? It's a sister by the name of Isis. And Isis was the first braider that they tried to prosecute against. There was the African American cosmetology school in Dallas also. They got upset with Isis because Isis started her own business. Granted, I'm here in San Antonio coming in from Los Angeles and I started my own business right outside my little apartment. Uh, I stayed there until I was able to purchase my home. Now I'm in my home, in my studio that you guys see with the palms used to be the garage. But now when you walk in here, it looks like a studio. It didn't happen overnight, but we got it done. Anyway, Isis lawyer contacted me because she needed help as another professional. And then I end up getting involved with Texas Cosmetology Board. I was the person who consulted them. I was the person who had them write the test for braiders and the rules and regulations for braiders because I told them, we do not need 1,500 hours. We need 150 hours. So I had a group of people around me who was educating me as I was educating them because I'm just a braider. I'm an artist. I'm not a politician. Mm -hmm. So I found out that the nail tech community only had to have 150 hours and all they needed was 150 square foot of space to start their business. So I picking back off the rules and regulations that they had. Isis, the breeder in Dallas, decided that she wanted to start teaching. So when she started teaching that same African-American cosmetology school, pressed charges against her and had her arrested. Uh. Having a braiding school. Now, keep in mind, there's no rules, no laws, or nothing in there for us having a braiding school. But they went in there, arrested the baby. And she got to the point to where she started lobbying in Dallas. And a group of people who basically help people who fought, who feels that the United States government has gave them injustice took over our case and we won. And that's when the governor signed a bill piggybacking with California, that cosmetology is no longer governing over braiders or lock technicians. What my hey, sister- Let me just say this, Lydia, guess what year this was? Tell us 1997. No, tell us, Devet. This, well, this is crazy. 2019. Pre-COVID. Isn't the that insane? Year, the same year that the Crown Act came about. Now, you guys got to realize the only reason the Crown Act has gotten so far is from the Dove Corporation. Guess what I got in my counter now? I use Dove soap. I use Dove lotion. 
because that was one corporation that took it over the top to letting Americans know the wrong and injustice is done to us by our hair. Yeah. Because of our hair. You got the everybody side. I'm not going to say everybody. For those who didn't see it, there's a young man that was in a wrestling match. And the referee decided that he could not wrestle his championship for his school because he had his hair long. And they they chopped that baby's hair off huh. in front of everybody. Huh. There's another young, young man that was in Houston, Texas. We're talking about a young man that almost have a 4.0 average in high school. Principal told him he could not walk across the stage because he had his hair locked. Granted, he had his hair locked since the 10th grade. Yeah. Now all of a sudden, you can't wear your hair. Why I can't put my hat on? I just get a, a larger hat, sir. Why I can't wear my... It's a power struggle. Because when we wear our hair natural, it goes against the Eurocentric standard. And it's just like, you know, it's like one area that they can't control us. That one area they try to control, mm -hmm. but they really can't control. How do you control what God put in your head? Yeah. They, they can't. And it really, it just messes, messes with and them. And then they're sitting up there acting like they got the best. Don't nobody want no white straight hair that every morning is all tangled up. That's why you got to wash your hair every day because to get all it, you can't style it. And then if you don't wash it more than three days, it casts off a funky odor that will stink up an elevator in two seconds. And you... But we you don't have wash. Put in your hair. <laughs> Yeah, you make me feel bad because my hair is kinky. I got the best hair in this world. I can wear it straight. I can wear it in an afro the next day. I can twist it. I can curl it. I, right. A black exactly. woman can go to work in one week with a different hairstyle and she has the energy. I just thought of something. I don't know what yeah. year this was. It's not funny, but it definitely speaks to how versatile our hair is and how powerful our hair is. Do you remember Cynthia McKinney, the Congresswoman? She was racially profiled because she changed her hairstyle and the Capitol Hill police did not recognize her. I, I remember that was when Judge I was living Maybelline. When Judge Maybelline decided that she was gonna wear her hair in braids, she lost her show. Well, 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 Michelle Obama came out after the president, after they left the presidency with her braids and she's sporting her braids comfortably now. I didn't want any more issues. She wants to travel and she don't want to comb her hair. Right. right. That's why I'm telling Brader, summertime is peak season for us. Yeah. This is when you need to sell. You going to Jamaica, you need your hair braided. Uh -huh. So you can get it early and go. Yep. And not only black women, I'm getting Latino women, I'm getting white women. They know. Wow. Yeah. I don't have to worry about it and I can swim. Mm -hmm. You know, it's amazing. I think that the Crown Act is signed. It's either in 23 or 26 states. So it's almost half the country. Yeah. I'm a, and really, it's the west side of the United States. Okay. okay. All up and down that Pacific coast. When I looked at the map, I just smiled because you know that's my hometown. But I just really smile. And a little bit on the east coast. And right. Because it's signed here in Connecticut. Yeah. In Thank Connecticut. you, Robin. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, Senator Porter. Yeah. So New what can we... What, what can we... Now, I'm, I'm just... Uh, I don't know where it is in Texas. It's still in the legislature, legislator, right? It, it well, it, it, made, it made the congressman, so now it's going to the governor. And that's and once the governor signed it, it's okay. And I, I think he will. Mm -hmm. It might take him a second, but I think he will. And this is why I do not want people to yell lawsuit too much right now because that'll give them a reason to say no. I'd be telling my young baby, Shh, don't put that on, don't put that on. Because you got some states that's already passed and you got some states that they're doing stuff. But y'all need to keep that on the hush until it's across the board. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm asking because they just boast in. You don't, it's not even your case. Why are you talking about this? Mm -hmm. And then my daughter was telling me that she found a group of white people were upset because we had the crown act on the docket. 
Why what? would that be upsetting? Why are you worried about a nappy hair? I'm not a farmer, so I'm not going to follow your issue. Right. You understand what I mean? I'm not, you know, I'm not a trucker, so I'm not going to follow the issue with the gas situation. Mm -hmm. That's not what I do mm -hmm. on a norm, unless it's something really major and it's, it's just common sense knowledge that we all should know. Mm -hmm. You know, why are white people upset that we're trying to get you to understand, accept it, it's the norm. Mm -hmm. so now, go ahead. Now, I feel that just like anything else, you need to be dressed for certain situations. You will not go to a courthouse in a party dress. You will not go to church looking crazy. And you shouldn't go to work looking crazy neither. Just because this law passed, comb your hair. If you want to wear your own Afro kinky hair or your extra curly, curly, wavy hair, and you just want to wear natural, comb it and let it be beautifully naturally. But don't go in there with this side smashed down to your hair. You're not representing nobody. Look like you're ungroomed. There's a difference between being beautiful and proud and and look like you're ungroomed. Mm -hmm. There's a difference between the two. Mm -hmm. Big difference, you know? I mean, it's a pride thing as well. I mean, you have to you have to wear your hair with pride. I mean, you yeah. should be wearing your hair. You should. Yeah. But pride. it's the babies. They call themselves rebelling, but it's not a good look. Mm -hmm. It's not a good look. So what? What? Um, here we are celebrating Nappy twenty five years later. We're still dealing with discrimination, um, ha hair politics. We're still having to uh, be activists for our hair. And stand up for the rights for our hair. What what do we what do we have in terms of suggestions or recommendations for those that are watching this that that are just wear their hair? Or they just want to wear be free. They just want a hair revolution. They want to be free and just have a revolution to just wear their hair. They want to go. What 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 do we what do we have to to say to those people who just want hair freedom? In the world. I would really and truly recommend everyone because it's different from city to city, state to state. Google Crown Act. Google the Crown Act and see what's going on in your community and go to your local politician offices and let them know this is something that needs to be done, especially if you were discriminated against. If you send your baby to school and her hair is braided and the teacher got issues with that, okay, I, I got to admit, sometimes we put the beads in the baby head and she's too busy playing with the beads instead of getting her lesson. That I do understand, but you do not have the right to cut my child beads out of her hair because you're frustrated. You send her to the office and you guys contact me and let me fix it period, you know, but the Crown Act, once again, is something that just needs to be the norm in the United States. Um, the braider and loctician professions need to just be the norm in the United States. You know how many times I hear my cousin can do it? If your cousin did do it, why she's not doing it? Because it's time consuming and she don't want to do it. So now you're mad, you got to come over here and help me pay my bills. Mm -hmm. But you want your hair done. So let it just be be the norm where you automatically know if I go to this person, when we call a plumber, it used to be $60. Remember, everybody know back in the 80s, you call a plumber, it's automatically $60. And it was automatically $80. Now it's automatically $150 if we call a plumber. You go to a braiding shop, you're going to know. You're going to spend a couple of hundred if you want a really good job. Or you go find your hustler that say $75 and you get what you get and you don't pitch a fit. And if you end up with no edges, it's an art. It's, it's an art. Yeah. Profession is art. And some of us, like me, die, sleep, and think about hair all the time. I'm just not getting to the point in my life to where I don't assess over hairstyles I have to do. Mm -hmm. There was a time in my life if I looked at a ring light, I saw patterns of cornrows in my mind. Wow. You know, it would bother me until I found the right hair texture with the right hair length because every hair texture and every hair length doesn't work for every technique. And that's another thing I need to train my braiders and my lock technicians. Some stuff we just can't do on you. 
We can kind of duplicate it, but it's not going to look like that. Mm-hmm. You don't have the right hair texture. Your hair too long, your hair too short, whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. Well, what I would say is um, I made the film to support women who are on that edge of straightening their hair uh, and perming it to going natural. So I would say watch films like Nappy. Um, what's that other one? Hair Love. Middle Just, Passage and Roots. Middle Passage and Roots. Thank you. <laughs> watch films and that uh, support natural hair. Research. Turn mm-hmm. off the TV. I know that's pretty radical. Um, stop. Uh, stop. Uh, just like cut back, I would say. I don't know if people are going to stop, but cut back on social media because they are not supporting the natural look. Even those YouTube channels that are supposedly for natural hair, they only support one type of hair. It's and the whole thing of grading hair, you know, to me, that's like a whole other conversation. Um, when I wore, started wearing my hair natural, I spent a lot of time with Rastafarians, um, just people who were into what I was into. So, you know, excuse me. um, You just got to really be in situations and around people that support what you want to do, you know, Mm -hmm. and that, and that support feeling good about your African self. Mm -hmm. And there, and there are films, books, um, talking to people, to professions like the vet when, you know, I know you teach classes and all of that, but there, there's a lot out there to really educate yourself so you can become um, happy with what you have, proud of what you have on your head, the God-given um, mange locks <laughs> that, that, that you were born with. I just, I just need to add one more thing. Back in um, the early 90s, I was at a natural hair seminar and there's a group of sisters sitting around and we were talking about what effect does chemicals really have on our body? You know, what effect does hair dye really have? What effect does the perms really have on our body? Now, thank you, Jesus. We finally got a team of people to do that research. And I know you all know about the class action soup. So it's, 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 yeah. It's kind of crazy. When when are we going to stop abusing our bodies? And it doesn't happen to everybody, but you're taking a chance of using something so you can be accepted around that group of people that you're in. But when you step outside the world, now your body's broken down and you're sick because you've been doing these chemicals. Some people get chemicals on their scalp every six weeks. Yeah. Yeah, they have rolled long because the stylist is using the correct shampoo and conditioners on it. Mm-hmm. But every six weeks, you get this much of new growth and you got to put a. Girl, deep breath. <laughs> so my, when, when I talk about my industry, I get really passionate because, yeah. to be honest, I got my education from behind the chair, lady. Honestly, I've been behind the chair since the age of 14, and I have worked with so many people with so many different walks of life, Mm -hmm. you know, from the ones who just came out of homelessness to the one just made their six million. You understand what I mean? So it's it's it impacts me when I sit and I just I think about it and then think about the ATLL that they give us because of my hair. We are just trying to maintain our style. Yeah. You know, I don't lock my hair because I'm on a spiritual journey. I lock my hair because I wanted long hair. Mm-hmm. You liked it. Yeah, you liked and it. I didn't want it. And I didn't want to comb it. And this is what I was telling the sisters back when 2000 hit. I said, lots going to hit, lots going to hit, lots going to be the next Jerry Curl. You're going to find a lot of black men wanting to wear their hair a lot because they want the long, long, long hair. Lots going to hit now everywhere you go. My accountant. I went to do my taxes, girl. He says, "Do bad do you was real?" I was watching four by four March Madness, and just about every player had braids and locks. It says it's been like that for the last decade, dude. You just notice it because of me. <laughs> like when your friend get a new car, then you start noticing that car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ada, I think it's if okay. white women could come to work with their hair wet, black women can come to work with their hair locked, braided, or whatever. <laughs> All right, come to work with blue hair. It's just fun. It's just something different. Right. 
And that has nothing to do with their culture. But if we come with a cornrow hair set that's done up, that's very elegant, it's like, that's theatrical. <laughs> theatrical? Theatrical. Yeah. You can't come up with another word for my hair but theatrical? And no. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, oh, yeah. No. But ladies, this has been a really good discussion. Um, I could go on and on about hair. I know you all can too. You know, I got to get out of here too. <laughs> I know I you got to get out of here. But thank, thank you, you so thank much. You, uh, I appreciate both. you both. Keep doing what you do. Yes, just, another another you. 25 years, Nappy is here. We're going to be celebrating. Yes. Keep are. doing your teaching. Yes. We, we, we're going we're to definitely uplift the Crown Act here. And one more time, how do we pull up Nappy online? The movie? Yeah. We're, we're going to see Nappy. You're working on. You I'm working it. on getting it online. Okay. So, um, work on. Uh, contact me on Instagram, and then I'll post yeah. it. Uh, I'll give me, you know. give me your email again. I didn't save in my banner. Give me your email address again, Lydia. Pzhead2 at gmail dot com. Okay, so that's how that's how we can reach uh, Lydia. Pzhead2 at gmail dot com. And the vet is through the uh, San Antonio locks.com. Yeah. Okay. And so I want to thank you all. You all have a good rest of your week, month, year, and keep doing Thank you, ladies, for your hard work you. and your research. I, my yes. industry, appreciate you. And I'll probably be using your research for my students. Yes. And give them something to do. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, take care. <laughs>